not too late to get that flu vaccine and it looks like an increasingly good idea because it appears we're heading for a rough influenza season. December, January and February are the peak months for the flu virus and there are some other things you can do to ward off the flu or common cold. Get at least eight hours of sleep every day. Take a hot shower, keeping nasal passages moist. Prevents viruses in your nose and moisture loosens mucus. Avoid processed foods and refined sugars. They encourage the growth of unhealthy bacteria and make it harder to defend against viruses. And stick to whole foods like fruits, veggies, proteins, nuts, and seeds. That'll help your immune system and boost it up a bit. Hey, we can use all the help we can as bad as colds and flus are uh, surfacing all over the Houston area right now. Good advice given to us, by the way, by registered dietitian Allie Miller with Naturally Nourish. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm glad you're also talking about foods that can Absolutely. boost our immune system. So we need to think about this and we need to cook with these as much as we can right now. Right, so as you heard, we wanna focus on the things to add in, but mm -hmm. also the things to stay away from. And so some of those processed foods can actually kind of harvest the bad bacteria that can exacerbate the cold or flu symptoms. But we're going to talk today about the foods we want to include to help boost up our immune system. All right, so what are you going to start with? Well, the first one is garlic. So garlic has a compound called allicin, mm -hmm. and it's antiviral, antibacterial, and actually antiparasitic. Very powerful fighter in the system, helps to boost our white blood cell uh, production, which fights off foreign invaders. So we can use garlic in almost every recipe mm -hmm. starts with saute a little bit of garlic. So I recommend bumping that up a little bit. And what I recommend doing also is roasting a head of garlic. So what I do here is you're just gonna cross section cut on the top of the bulb. I have never done this before. So you're just what gonna expose advice. each um, clove. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just take a thin slice of butter. I use the uh, Pasture Organic Valley butter, so it has more of the omega-3 fatty acids. And I'm just gonna place this little slice on top um, and then sprinkle a little bit of sea salt. Mm -hmm. And then all you're gonna do is wrap it in foil like this. And keep in mind the roots are still intact, so mm -hmm. that keeps all the cloves together. Wrap it in foil, and you can just kinda twist it at the top here. Pop it in your oven for 375 for about 15 minutes. It'll come out nice, beautiful, and Aromatic, mm. smells oh, wonderful. It smells and all you're so gonna good. do I could is eat just, it like an apple. Right. Yeah, so you're just gonna <laughs> squeeze it from the base, and all of the cloves will pop out. You can mix that into butter and use it as a spread or as a starter for a lot of recipes. Yum. So that's a great, a great quick tip. Um, and you can just eat them once they're roasted. They're not as um, pungent then. Uh -huh. okay. um, another one is probiotic foods. We talked about that a lot two weeks ago, as far as fermenting your own vegetables, the kefir or the organic. Um, probiotic rich mm -hmm. yogurts would be a great option there. Keeping in mind though that the dairy probiotic sources may not be the best with the mucus buildup. Okay. So you may want to do more of, of the vegetable cultures at that time. Okay, and you have seeds? What I do. Pumpkins? This is for zinc. So your best sor sources of zinc are actually going to be oysters or beef. But for the vegetarian population, the pumpkin seeds are the strongest source. Mm -hmm. So having a combination of any of those three will help to boost the immune system. And also vitamin D. So vitamin D we're going to find in our egg yolks, also in our milk and fortified grains. Um, and so having hard boiled eggs and your kiddos lunches would be a good way to kind of boost up their immune system. And then tea is always good too. Tea as well, yes. Actually both black tea and green tea are very potent immune boosters. And my last one I really want to focus on is going to be chicken soup. Mm -hmm. uh, we, hear, we hear that that's always good for a common cold and it's really quick to make a simple bone broth. So I'm going to pop over here and just show okay. you how quickly we can throw it together. So I have some water heating <coughs> here and I'm just going to toss in the, uh, this is the carcass of a rotisserie chicken. So you could have this for dinner one night and then just as after everyone picks away at it, you can leave a little bit of meat on the bone. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just gonna toss in the bone. I kept some of the drumsticks. And I'm gonna reserve the, some of the meat that I pulled off for after I strain my broth. So we'll let the chicken sit in there. And then I'm just gonna quarter an onion. And so again, this is something that you say we can just make really, really Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. We always hear that chicken soup can help when you're sick or that it can help boost your immune system. What is it about it? That, that so there's two makes? amino acids found in the bone. There mm -hmm. is one called cysteine, which actually mimics a... Uh, acetylcysteine compound that's used in bronchitis medications. And there's another amino acid called glutamine that they're both released from the bone. And the glutamine helps to heal the gut and boost the immune system. 
So I'm just roughly chopping, just in thirds, um, carrots, celery, an onion I quartered and kept the skin on, you'll see, for the onion. That gives it the nice yellow color. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to want to put, the trick to it is, is putting a little bit of vinegar. This helps to leach the minerals out of the bone. Mm. Um, and so that's going to be really important to get the optimal mineral content. So about two tablespoons. And then you do want to be a little bit generous. Keep in mind, there's no sodium in this at all yet. So I'm going to put a good tablespoon or two of sea salt in there. Um, the salt helps to thin our mucus duct. Um, and like we said earlier, you want to keep the uh, mucus areas mm -hmm. nice and moist mm -hmm. to discourage bacteria. And do you use a bay leaf? I do. do. I toss one or two in. We can mm -hmm. do that. Okay. And that's going to be nice for flavor to just keep it all rounded. Okay. It's such good advice. And then this is our, our final look of at least that the is, broth. That is. I just tossed right? a little bit of parsley in there. And you can actually drink it. Um, yeah. And I want to say this smells so good, I have to ask you what this so is. So that's just warm water with oh. a little bit of eucalyptus and lavender. <laughs> I couldn't just sit there all day like a spot. I really could. Um, so what you can do is you could just mm. put a warm washcloth and inhale it. Or what I actually do is I'll dab it on my shower walls, allowing the steam to create a vapor. That keeps everything really moist in your system and you breathe it in deeply. These herbs are actually, both the eucalyptus and the uh, lavender are very antimicrobial, antibacterial. Mm. So they're fighting the bugs in your system and you can breathe them into the areas where we're really getting a lot of buildup. Oh, I wish I could have uh, had this bowl a week ago. Thanks, <laughs> Allie. So good to talk sure. to you. Good information. And oh, we hope you stay safe, everyone, and, and healthy this awful flu season so uh, boost everything you can including all these foods hope it helps you oh